Hey guys, what's up? It's Ali with Kate the Jeep and the 511 Jeep JKU Rubicon project. Today we've got a great install. I'm here with John Rook from Castle Fabrications. John, what are we doing today? Today we're going to install the RCV Performance Ultimate CV Axle. Yes! The RCV Performance Ultimate CV Axle simply replace your Jeep JK's weak Dana 44 U-joint axle shafts with a high strength, constant velocity design. Tests prove that the Ultimate CV Axle to be twice as strong as the OEM Jeep JK shafts and they're just as tough at a straight angle as they are at extreme angles, where the U-joints are weakest. The Ultimate CV axles also eliminate U-joint binding to allow smooth transfer power to the ground. Even if you have big tires and big power, there are no worries. The axle set includes right and left CV axle shafts, SST seals, installation tool, synthetic molly grease, and installation hardware. Today we're going to be installing RCV Performance Ultimate CV Axles and we're going to take it up a notch and install sleeves and gussets at the same time. Right now we're going to be removing the steering linkage to access bolts in the back side to hold the calipers on. And the reason why I'm putting these nuts back on is because I'm going to use a uh, pry bar and a hammer to break these free. And uh, when, as you're putting force, downward force on it, you want to keep these from shooting down and popping out. Step back a little bit. Reason why I like this method better is because there's an optional method of using a fork and a lot of times that damages the tie rod boot. Now that that's free, I can freely move the knuckle back and forth to access hardware on the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the steering stabilizer or dampener just to get it out of the way. So right now we're gonna remove the two bolts holding the caliper bracket on so that allows us to get the rotor off. But as you're doing it, make sure you remove the ABS line and not to damage it. And then we'll remove that part once we get the caliper off. Once the caliper is off, use a wire to hang it to take load off of the uh, brake line. A lot of times the factory rotors are held on if they've never been replaced with these clips. So you got to pull these clips off. It's not necessary to reuse them because the wheel will hold the rotor on once it's, uh, once it's in position. Sometimes they're a little tough, but now that those clips are off, the rotor comes off with ease. Now that the rotor is off, you can see you have access to the ABS sensor and the five millimeter Allen that holds it on. You can now remove that. There's a little O-ring inside, so sometimes it's a little stuck. If you wiggle it back and forth, you can loosen it. I have Ali working on the other side, and the one thing I want to point out is you can't fully remove the ABS line until the bearing and dust shield are free. Now we're going to remove the axle nut. Now we're going to move the three bolts that hold the uh, bearing hub on.
Now that the bolts are removed, you can pull the axle bearing out. Be careful not to damage the ABS wire. Now that the uh, bearing is out, you can remove that ABS wire and get out of the way, as well as the dust shield. Now that the bearings have been removed, you can pull the axle shafts out. Sometimes you have to get in the backside here to pry it out. Now that it's free, you can go ahead and slide it out. Now I'm going to be removing the coil springs, shock, and sway bar links so I can lower the axle down to install gussets on the C's and sleeves for the internals of the tube. Right now I'm removing the lower shock bolt so I can swing it out of the way. Now I'll be removing the sway bar link. Now that the sway bar links are removed and the lower shock bolts are out, once the lower track bar bolt is removed, the axle will freely drop so the springs can be removed. Once the axle is lowered, you can push on down on the housing, pull up on the spring, slide the spring out. So to get these out of the way, I'm just gonna use a bungee to keep them from getting in your way while you're working on the axle tubes. Now that the springs are removed, we're gonna prep the surface so we can install the inner axle C gussets. While I'm here prepping for the inner C gussets, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the surface on the lower pivot for the skid plate. I wanna take a minute to talk about like what we're doing, why we're doing it. And uh, basically, the, the main concern has always been we're gonna be running 37 inch tires. We're gonna go supercharged. We're gonna be adding a lot more weight onto the vehicle. And of the components that are gonna fail, one of those is axles, you know. As we go crawling, as we go driving, um, there's going to be a lot of stress on our stock axle housing. And what we're doing here with all the work that we're doing today is we're going to reinforce the axle housing. It's going to become a lot stronger, about 30% is what people say. And then the axles themselves are twice as strong as the stock units. So we're going to end up with a, a really solid system that will help us avoid the cost of upgrading to like a full DAN60, uh, which a lot of people will do. But you're looking at thousands of dollars for that. This setup here will run you um, minus the axles into the hundreds of dollars to reinforce your housing. And you're looking at, you know, about 1300 or so for your axles. So it becomes a lot more affordable than going, you know, $15,000 on a full upgrade on your entire assembly. Here. So I'm going to go ahead and tack on the lower skid plates on the lower perches. Now that we got the axle gussets tacked on, we're going to go ahead and weld them on the housing. Now that we're done installing the axle gussets, we're gonna go ahead and get the axle housing ready for the sleeves. As I'm preparing to install the sleeves, I'm gonna do a minimum of six holes on the passenger side and a minimum of four holes on the driver's side. Before you do that, you need to center punch or you're gonna drill the holes. I like to start off with a quarter inch drill bit, finish up with a half inch drill bit. Now that we got the axle housings drilled, we're gonna slide the axle sleeves in and plug weld them. Make sure when you slide the axle sleeves in, the tapered part's out, because you're gonna weld that in. And 
and it's in. You wanna make sure this tapered edge here is flush with the outside of this, this housing tube here. Now that the axle sleeves and gussets are installed, we're using acetone to remove any oils from the raw metal surface and from drilling the holes so we can put a fresh coat of paint on. We're gonna put a fresh coat of paint on to prevent any future rust. While we're waiting for paint to dry, we're gonna go ahead and install the springs, lower shock mount, and sway bar links. We are jacking up the suspension now so we can install the shock spring. Right here you can see the difference between the stock Jeep Dana 44 axles and RCV Performance Ultimate CV axle. One of the main differences is, is the stock axle uses a yun joint, which is prone to failure, while RCV's Performance Ultimate CV axle uses a CV joint, which is just as good under lock condition as it is under straight conditions. So what I'm doing now is adding extra grease that came with the RCV Performance Ultimate Axle CV kit. So now it's time to install RCV's Performance Ultimate CV axle. First, you gotta install the boot it has to go in through the side. It will not fit through this hole. So stick the boot in, press the axle through. So we slide the axle in, stop at this point. It's recommended to use WD-40 on the CV so it slides onto the boot easier. Once you have it in this location, you use RCV's installation tool. You set it behind the boot. and press it together, and you're in. I'm rotating the insulation tool so I can remove it. Now that the RCV performance axle is installed, we're gonna reroute the ABS line, wind it through the dust shield, and install the bearing. As you're sliding the bearing on, start to set the ABS sensor into the proper hole. You can push it down. Use the supplied hardware from RCV and bolt the bearing back on. Installing the last bearing bolt. Now that the bearing bolts are installed, torque to spec. Now that the bearing's installed, reinstall the Allen that holds the ABS sensor into place. Torque to spec. Now we're ready to install the axle nut. Now it's time to install the rotor. Now that we installed the rotor, we're able to remove the caliper from the wire holder and install it on the vehicle. Reinstall the two caliper bolt. Once you get both of the caliper bolts lined up, makes it easy to install by hand and torque to spec. Once the caliper's installed, reinstall the ABS line to the brake line with the factory clips. Now that the RCV axles are installed, the brakes are put back on, we're gonna reinstall the track bar. Sorry. Now we're gonna install the drag link. To reinstall the drag link, since it's not seated in the taper, you'll have to use an Allen wrench and a normal combination wrench. Okay. 
Now it's time for the steering crossover link. Same applies to the drag link. You will need to use an Allen to hold the shaft and a wrench to tighten. So we're just about finished. We're wrapping up right now. We're getting our arms back on and uh, cannot wait to get this baby back on the trail. Unfortunately, we jumped the gun. I got to remove this side of the steering crossover link to put the stabilizer shock back on because the bolt won't fit in. Way to go, John. <laughs> now that the steering crossover link's removed, we can now insert the bolt for the dampener shock. How easy was that? So now it's time to put the wheels on. So we got our axles in, the axle housings are sleeved, and the axle inner seat is gusseted. It's finished, it's over, thank God. All we got left to do is put on our wheels, get our bumper back on, and work on this fender. It was easier coming off, I think, than it's gonna be going on. But I just might leave this whole inner liner out until we do our Icon piece. Um, coming up, we got some great stuff from Yukon, Evil Manufacturing, Icon, Goose Gear. There's really great stuff coming. Can't wait to show you guys. Stay tuned. So this is the point of the video where I take credit for everything we just did, make it look like I'm the man. John just helped me, but you're used to that, right? I am. And uh, next next uh, time we get together, what are we doing? We're gonna install the Icon suspension lift. That's right, we're doing a three and a half, four inch lift on the front with a coilover system. On the rear, we're doing a coil spring system. I know you're wondering what the heck we're doing. We'll get to that on the next segment. You know, I like that one. You like it? I like it. You like it? Yeah. yeah. My knees don't.